Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jenna. I'm a junior at Connecticut College and I'm studying human development. And today I'm going to be presenting some creative discipline methods. The resource I found most helpful is a book used by families of many cultural backgrounds as well as the agencies that work with those families. It's called Parenting with Love and Logic, written by Foster Klein and Jim Fay. It is available at your local library, or you can request it at your local library. It's also available new or used to be purchased online or in a bookstore, and it is also available in Spanish. While we know this book might not cover all disciplinary methods, we could still use it as a resource and try out some of the methods that they propose. Firstly, no matter how you as a parent choose to go about discipline, Faye and Klein stress, as well as other scholars, the importance of setting expectations for your children and making sure that they understand those expectations. For example, if your expectation is that at the dinner table we don't scream, then reiterate that rule at the dinner table before dinner or maybe at another time. Klein and Faye suggest that if after one firm, please stop, your child continues screaming at the table, for example, then you should give them the opportunity to continue out their behavior elsewhere, since the expectation is that there is no screaming at the dinner table. It is important to note that this is not a punishment. If your child feels the need to scream or do something that is inappropriate at the dinner table, for example, then we should give them the opportunity to do so and pull themselves together, but in a different location. Side note, after your child returns would be a great time to talk things over and maybe ask some questions about what had just happened. Here's a situation that may have happened to you in public. Say you're going out to a store and your expectation is that your child won't grab things off the shelves. Gently but firmly remind them that that is your expectation before entering the store. Then if you're inside the store and your child starts grabbing things off the shelves, Remind them and give them a chance to change their behavior by saying, please stop. And if they ignore that, Klein and Faye suggest either isolation or change of location. In this situation, you might leave your cart where it is with everything in it and remove the child to a different part of the store or to the exit of the store. At that point, calmly explain to them why it's inappropriate to grab things off the shelves. Something that your child finds really valuable is your opinions and your explanations of things. So with this being said, that doesn't mean necessarily blaming or scolding or yelling. Instead, try using Klein and Faye's I messages. For example, I would appreciate it if you respected the employees at this store and didn't ruin their display. Or maybe if your child is not wanting to go to church one morning, slip in a statement like, I am so glad I have my church. I really appreciate all my friends there. One tip that a lot of educators use in the classroom is specific types of question asking. So for example, if you see a child and know that the child doesn't want to put on their coat, asking them, do you want to put on your coat, might just warrant a no answer. Another option in this situation is to give the child choices that both end in the same result. So instead of just asking, would you like to put on your coat? You could say something like, it's time to go outside. Would you like to put on your coat yourself or would you like me to help you? So in the end, the coat will be going on and you're giving the child a choice, which is something they like to do. For those with younger children, there's the ever infamous temper tantrums. One way to stop temper tantrums is to not feed into them or act angry because of them. If the expectation is that we don't roll around and scream on the floor, but the child feels the need to do this, then give them the opportunity to remove themselves from the situation, go to another room, and pull themselves together. And Klein and Faye say that no child will roll around and scream and kick alone in their room but they will do it with a captive audience. If you have a child that struggles with interruptions, whether that be while you're on the phone or interruptions between other adults, Klein and Faye suggest that it's really important to address it in the moment as children don't really understand the later consequence. So that might mean stopping your phone conversation and saying, 
Would you like to continue your conversation somewhere else because I'm on the phone right now? And then maybe after, ask them what they wanted to say and talk about it. If your child has trouble staying in his or her room, one way to handle this might be using a technique I mentioned earlier, giving them two options with the same result. So, for example, you could say to your child, would you like to stay in your room with the door open or shut? So ultimately, the point of that statement was staying in your room, and then you give them an option and that should hopefully help. And remember, it's just as, if not more important, to praise your child for good behavior or for meeting your expectations. We want to encourage the good behavior. Klein and Faye, the authors of Parenting with Love and Logic, also have a version for teenagers parenting teenagers with love and logic. Klein and Faye's book has 48 different scenarios at the end of their book and tips and tricks to handling those scenarios. And some of those include internet use, pet care, peer pressure, toilet training, and more. It's a really great resource. And another book I would recommend is How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and How to Listen So Kids Will Talk by Adele Faber and Elaine Maslich. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and for tuning in with me. I hope you found some of these tips useful. I would highly suggest all of the videos on this page so make sure to check those out and thank you once again.